In a normal year, uh, this would be the feast day of our parish. May 24th is the feast of Mary, help of Christians. Uh, as such, falls on a Sunday, especially the Ascension, Jesus wins out, and we transfer our feast to tomorrow. Of course, tomorrow is also Memorial Day, when we remember in a very special way all those men and women who have served our country and have gone on to their eternal reward. So tomorrow we'll have a very special Mass here uh, at 9 a.m. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are continuing our look at prayer, and the Feast of the Ascension is perfect for our reflection. So first of all, we have to go back to the basics. What does it mean that Christ ascended into heaven? We say it in the Creed. What does it mean? Well, it is simultaneously one of the most important mysteries of our faith and one of the least understood, even by believers. With his ascension into heaven, Jesus is now present to us in a new way, a new dimension, if you will. Even though his earthly, visible presence in the world has ended, Jesus remains with us in an invisible, but now even more real way. The spiritual world is more visible, actually, is more real, excuse me, than what we can see. Jesus is no longer in a specific place, taking up space like you're doing in a pew or I'm doing up here at the Ambo. We don't have to hop a flight to go see him and ask him our questions in some faraway land. Though a trip to the Holy Land is wonderful, uh, though you don't have to go there to ask him your questions. Because of the resurrection and ascension, our Lord is present. He is here whenever we call upon him and wherever we call upon him. He is the head. We are the body. And the head and the body are not separated. We are united with him. So you have access to him all the time. Think carefully about this. At the Incarnation, thank Christmas, the eternal second person of the most holy trinity, without beginning and without end, took on human flesh from the Virgin Mary and became truly one of us. He grew up like one of us. He walked on the earth like one of us. He suffered like we do, and he died like we will. But also being fully God, he rose from the dead in a real but glorified body. Now think Easter. He transformed our human flesh into what it will be. This is our promise as well. Not bound by the limitations of space and time or the visible universe. The second eternal person of the Holy Trinity at the Ascension returns to the Godhead and unites our humanity to his divinity irreparably. Heaven is not a place beyond the stars, but something so much greater. Heaven means that you and I now have a place in God. Now, I really hope this information is not disappointing to you, that heaven is not the finest golf course you've ever seen, or tennis court, or soccer field, or whatever is your favorite pastime. Heaven is a person. Let that sink in. Heaven is a person. Heaven is union with the eternal, uncreated God through the person of Jesus, our head. And we can get a glimpse of that perfect happiness even now, when we seek union with God now in this life. Why wait? He has given us the ability. And this is accomplished through prayer. Now, are you tired of always feeling angry and frustrated and bent out of shape at every little thing that seems to go wrong that comes your way. 
So what you you will come to find is that through prayer, you will experience a constant peace, even in the midst of all of that, even in the midst of screaming kids or disappointed parents or stupid drivers on the road or whatever is going on. Or do you prefer to be angry and hold grudges all the time? If we're honest, Some of us do want that. But if we would prefer to have lower blood pressure and an ability to be at peace, even amidst the world when it seems to be crashing down around us at times, then work on your relationship with God through prayer. And as you begin to truly take your relationship with God seriously as the most important relationship you have. You come to discover, as we mentioned last week, that prayer is not something, it is not something that you or I do. Prayer is something that God does that you're open to. God does through us. We just have to be open. So our lesson this week will be two simple S's. Silence and surrender. It's very simple, actually, because prayer ultimately is beautiful simplicity. Don't make it difficult. (laughs) Of course, before all else, you and I must have determination. St. Teresa of Avila said, we must have a determined determination to never give up prayer. (laughs) So, if you want to be successful at prayer, the first thing you need is silence. That's the first S. Begin in silence. Stop what you are doing, go to a quiet place, and start by just being silent, placing yourself in the presence of God. It is in the silence of the heart that God speaks. A great place for silent and focused prayer is in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. Although we can't yet return to our 24-hour perpetual adoration right now, we do have adoration every day available from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. in Old St. Mary's. It's going on right now. Everyone there, you walk in, and everyone there is asked to be silent. You don't have to ask someone to be silent. They're supposed to be so that we're better able to hear God speaking. If you can't make it to Old St. Mary's, then go outside your house, go to a quiet room, go somewhere silent. We all have a place. Lastly for today, the second S, surrender. In that silence, surrender yourself to God and to his will for you. Now this isn't easy. It is easier to conquer a country than to conquer ourselves. Many of us hold on to our sins for so many reasons. It's why so many people leave the faith, because we choose not to surrender. We often hold on to our plans ourselves because it gives us a feeling of control. But we really don't have control. The pandemic can show you that for certain. <laughs> when we surrender totally, we find that we don't even need to be in control. God's will is beautiful. God's will for you is perfect. And he is always there. God said, I have chosen you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Every day, you have to say yes. Wake up and say yes. Total surrender. To be where he wants you to be. In the words of Mother Teresa, to accept whatever he gives, and to give whatever it takes with a big smile. This is the surrender to God. To accept to be cut into pieces, and yet every piece to belong only to him. This is the surrender. To accept all people that come to you. To accept the work you happen to do. Today, maybe you have a good meal. Tomorrow, maybe you have nothing. All right to accept and to give 
whatever it takes. It takes your good name. It takes your health. It takes. Yes, that is the surrender. She says, you are free then. A wise woman. <laughs> it's the paradox of our faith. Friends, surrender to God and you will be free. I'd like to end just with the prayer of surrender, St. Ignatius of Loyola. Take, Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will. You have given all to me. To you, Lord, I return it. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us stand. I believe.